you mentioned organic. Is there a difference between organic and inorganic, I guess, uh, but inorganic in the sense of being non-organic produce in the se- like for eating leafy greens? Why would we choose one over another and what difference does it make from a composition or bioavailability point of view? Um, I think the, so, so pesticides um, are obviously something that are, are used now in agriculture because we're, you know, these farms are huge and we're growing mass quantities of foods. And so they're spraying things that'll ward off insects. So insectis- insecticides or pesticides as are known and also fungicides and other things to prevent fungus and anything that's going to destroy the crop, right? And, you know, a lot of these types of pesticides are, I would say, they're obviously damaging to the (laughs) insects, but um, to humans, the question is, well, are they damaging to humans? And, you know, there there were a lot, especially things like rotenone, paraquat, these were used um, for a long time. And those are, those are chemicals that actually cause we, we use them, scientists use them, I've used it myself, in the lab to induce Parkinson-like symptoms in animals because it disrupts your mitochondria, which are the their little organelles inside of almost all of your cells and that are producing energy. Super important. And in Parkinson's disease, the mitochond- mitochondria and your neurons kind of become dysfunctional. And you can do, you can cause this by just giving them this, this pesticide, paraquat or rotenone. And that will basically cause their dopamine pr- producing neurons to die and because they can't make energy. So they die and they get motor dysfunction, very similar to Parkinson's. And so I remember, this is, it's funny, I remember the first time I, I was learning about this in, you know, this was actually even before I was in graduate school, but also in graduate school, I was like, oh, I'm putting this stuff yeah, uh, you know, to to give it to a, to a mouse to study, you know, Parkinson's or to induce a Parkinson like human sort of model of Parkinson's, and this was like put on our produce, and I was like, that was like really kind of upsetting to think about. So, um, I think the point I'm getting at here is, you know, obviously, like as more data comes out and we learn and go, oh, we can't, you know, we have to stop using that, but um. There's been studies, even on the newer types of pesticides that are used on produce, you know, there have been studies that have shown they're probably not good to have on a daily basis because of that insidious damage that they're causing. And I get, you know, people are probably thinking of like gly- glyphosate, right? Roundup is a big one as well. So um, if you can eat organic, I, I, I do think there's like some, there's like the dirty dozen, you know, and the clean... I forgot how many. Doesn't Europe like block most of this stuff? They, like, why is it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what they glyphosate. Maybe they do. They they do they do um, ban more stuff. I I don't know all the regulations differences and why those regulatory. Maybe you can have someone on the podcast that can illuminate yeah, that. Yeah. But um, I do know that when it comes to those pesticides that are used. There are, su- there are certain vegetables and fruits that are very thin skinned that absorb it. So even if you mm. wash the vegetable off, it's already been absorbed through the skin. And so like, let's talk about an avocado versus a strawberry, right? Like, like yeah. is it so important to eat organic for avocados? Not really. It's got a really thick skin. So that isn't, it, it, it's really protecting the fruit. Strawberries, on the other hand, have a very thin skin, and, you know, and so that, that would be something that you want to choose organic. I would say that, yes, organic would be the best choice. If you can't always afford organic, then choose. Okay, bananas, is that a so important? Probably not. Avocados, probably not. Oranges, probably not. Apples, yes, right? Thin skin. And there's like, again, there's like lists out there that like will list the things that are like, okay, if you're going to not do organic, here's the one, here's the vegetables and fruits that are the safest to not opt. I, I love the, I mean, the dirty dozen list, but it's actually more practical to remember the thickness of the skin as sort of like the barrier, the membrane between pesticides and you. How do you wash your produce? And, and like, and I say this having seen, I think last night on Instagram, you know, some uh, guy putting baking soda and vinegar and like soaking it for 20 minutes. And like, is that how we wash produce? Like, how do you wash produce to like get stuff off of it. What do you do? I just use water. I just use water and wash it because I do buy organic as well. So you're thinking about pesticides. You're like, oh, well, I don't want to get Parkinson's disease or cancer, right? It's causing damage. 
But so my mentor, Bruce Ames, um, he's, you know, now 96 years old. Um, I don't know how many years ago it was. It must have been back in the 80s. He had done some experiments with um, a hematologist from his lab. And they were looking at what happens if you don't get enough folate. So that's what, another one of those essential micronutrients that you have to get from your diet. Guess what? Leafy greens are one of the best sorts of folate. So leafy greens are, are just, they're, they're packed with certain micronutrients, but they don't have a lot of protein, right? So um, folate, again, we have to get from our diet. And if we don't get enough folate, it actually causes damage to our DNA much more than eating a pesticide would because folate is required to make new DNA. It's required to make new DNA. And so, you know, we're constantly making new cells in our body. And if you don't have that folate, the precursor to make one of the nucleotides of DNA isn't going to be there. And so your body substitutes something else in there that's from RNA that's not supposed to be there and it causes DNA damage. And he had done these studies where it was like he took animals put them on a low folate diet, similar to what some people in the United States get. And then he took the other group of animals and he he irradiated them with ionizing radiation. Okay. This is like, yeah, you're going to want to avoid this, right? And the folate deficiency was like ionizing radiation. It did the exact same thing. It caused double strand breaks in DNA, exactly like the ionizing radiation. So not getting that important micronutrient from your leafy greens, folate, was like being getting ionizing radiation. So again, back to that theme that we started with, thinking about what you need is so important. And we're sitting here talking about pesticides, oh, we should avoid them. Yes, but guess what's worse? If you don't eat the greens, you're not gonna get enough folate. Although nowadays, folate's so important, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's in every processed food. They put the oxidized form of it, folic acid, which we can get into, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, it's a, it, it's it's a it's another form of, of folate, and um, it is more more stable, which is why it's used um, in processed foods rather than folate. But uh, it's it is not the exact same as folate, so it's preferable if you're going to get the folate from your diet from leafy greens.